Now there's a lot of sort of traditional vehicles here you'd expect. Uh, the Mustang has been the most popular tuner car of all time. And so there's a lot of modified Mustangs by all kinds of different companies out there. It's the Race Skins uh, 2011 Mustang GT here on display in the Ford booth. And of course, Pro Charger Power. So Richard, this is a really cool car. Um, it's got, I see a lot of carbon fiber on it. Yeah, this actually happens to be one of the cars we've been working with a while. It runs our full three inch competition exhaust system. Uh, but we gave the guys a call of our race skins to see what they can help us out with. And carbon fiber is their specialty. We wanted to do something different with the tips. And obviously they got a prototype here on a system that runs carbon fiber with our stainless exhaust. Okay, so I'm standing with the guys from Race Skins, Michael and Terrell. Um, so tell me about this beautiful car. Well, this is the Race Skins RS50. Um, we've uh, been working really hard on this car this year. It incorporates a lot of new things that we have. Obviously, carbon fiber is our specialty. The tips that we have from uh, Magnaflow, um, we've been working with them for about a year on, and it's ready. It's a beautiful car. We're really proud of it, and we hope you like it too. It's beautiful. and. Your thoughts? One of, one of the things we did special in this car is we, we love to mate sexy design with performance and that is the embodiment in the RS50. Magflow has supported us fully on this car to make awesome products and it is part of the stage pr pr package that we're going to offer. What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back with my latest purchase, this 2011 Ford Mustang GT that's been converted into, well, truthfully, one of a kind, a prototype that came from SEMA back in 2010. So here she is, the 2011 Ford Mustang GT, the S197, the very first year of the 5.0 liter Coyote V8 engine. This was a big year for Ford, and this engine has proven to be an absolute monster. Super reliable, a great motor that produces plenty of horsepower. We've got another one that has this in it at home, a 2022, and that one puts out about 470 horsepower with a 10-speed automatic. This one is a six-speed manual, of course, save the manuals, and I think the horsepower rating on this is about 450, 440, 450 horsepower if it was stock, but here's the crazy thing. These engines, without any internal modifications at all, are absolutely capable of being boosted, producing 600 horsepower and still being reliable. And that, my friends, is exactly what we have right here. You're looking at the original Pro Charger P1SC1. It's a high output, air to air intercooled Pro Charger, supercharger really, but in a smaller form factor. This car, is special for so many reasons. Number one, it was in SEMA. Ford awarded Race Skins, the company that actually designed and put this entire car together, an award for the design of the car. Ford took this car themselves and sent it all over the country showcasing the modifications that have been done to it. This car has been on the cover of magazines. It's been on websites. It's been on YouTube. And this car was also the very first one that Pro Chargers put their Pro Charger HO kit on. And you're looking at it. It's sitting right here in front of us. The best part is I got it for next to nothing. I got this car for basically what you would pay for a stock one. It's got 10,000 original miles because show car. It was never driven. It was used for promotional purposes only 
and that was it. This car is a culmination of work, hours of labor designing between a few different companies. Number one, Pro Chargers stepped up and they said, we're gonna do this to the car next. And this is a big one, Steeda. This car, <laughs> you wouldn't believe all of the suspension components. Basically, anything suspension related on this car is no longer factory. Steeda stepped in and redid the whole thing. They actually supplied all of the components and the race skins team went through and replaced everything. I'll put a list down below, but every piece of the suspension has been customized. Next, Magnaflow stepped in and they worked with race skins for this custom carbon fiber exhaust. You probably can't see it. It's probably very difficult to see, but what an amazing job they did. Now, since you've seen some of the videos and probably some pictures of this car when it was at SEMA, one of the things you're going to notice immediately is it's missing a couple of things. Actually, a few if you look closely. Number one, there used to be red stripes going down this fender. Those have been taken away. Next, when Pro Chargers first got a hold of this car, it did not have the body kit on it yet. It was just a stock Mustang GT. They had a Pro Chargers logo here at the beginning. Then eventually this changed from Pro Chargers to RS50. And now obviously there is nothing there at all. So it's missing the stripes. It's missing the little sticker up here. There was a big sticker that went across the windshield that said race skins. Obviously that is missing as well. And finally, in my opinion, the biggest difference is the wheels. It had 22 inch Ford Giotto wheels, and now it's got 20 inch, uh, what are these, Frada F8s, they're forged eights. So good wheels, no doubt. Uh, these wheels are about $2,600 by themselves. They've got brand new Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. So obviously <laughs> best of the best when it comes to the tires and definitely very, very good forged wheels, which are great for Oklahoma and the potholes that we have out here. You'll notice that the, uh, the brakes have been upgraded significantly to handle that added power. You've got the Shelby six piston front calipers and rotors. Those front uh, calipers and rotors mean business. Back here, I think that is also the uh, brakes from the Shelby. So yeah, these would be from a GT500, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like those, those struts are different. Hopefully you can see down in there. You can see some silver shining in there. So those shocks, you've got some suspension components back here. Uh, let me see if I can get you under here a little bit. I've tried to get it on the lift. That's not gonna happen. As you can see, yes, she is, uh, she's not stock. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. She's had a lot of work done to her. She's nowhere near stock. And I think one of my favorite parts of this car is race skins used to be really big into carbon fiber. Now race skins is still around, but obviously a lot has changed. The economy's changed. Businesses have changed since, well, we won't say the word, but a lot of things have happened over the years. Race skins is still around and they do a lot of stripe kits. They do an amazing job with their stripes, as you can see. These are very old, but they look really, really, really good. What race skins was known for back in the day was their carbon fiber work. So they went all out on carbon fiber on this car. I want to show you guys. Um, Steeda provided also, make sure I'm closing this right. Steeda provided this hood. That's a Steeda, I think a Q8 hood. This front fascia is Steeda as well. And uh, this front bumper, Steeda as well. So all of this comes from Steeda. The headlights are some kind of an aftermarket. I don't believe that's a factory Ford. It's got a halo light and some LEDs. You know, they're, they're kind of tuner looking. You've got a filter here, which I assume is for a blow off valve. You've got these vents in the front and those actually feed straight over to these front brakes to help keep them cool. Now, speaking of the carbon fiber, these are not stripes. They are, but they're not. These stripes are literally handmade carbon fiber stripes. Look how thick these stripes are. I don't know how well you can see it, but you could put your fingernail under them. These are, these are thick, real carbon fiber 
all the way down, all the way down. This one's actually coming a little loose. And then down here as well. Then you've got this massive, you can see I've, I've actually been hitting it on stuff. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm tempted to take this front splitter off. I really am because it's a beautiful, beautiful full carbon uh, fiber splitter. And uh, I, honestly, I'm tearing it up driving this car around. Obviously this car is not meant to be a daily driver. It's a show car. Um, this carbon fiber is absolutely gorgeous. And I have just nailed it bottoming of this car out many times now. So moving on from these beautiful hand laid carbon fiber, son of a bitch. Now aside from these absolutely beautiful, masterfully crafted carbon fiber stripes, as I said, this is kind of what Race Skins was known for. These are real carbon fiber caps on the mirrors and they're absolutely gorgeous. And if you're thinking that that's it, well, you're wrong. I'm gonna take you to the other side where maybe we have a little better light. Maybe we don't, but I'm gonna show you these carbon fiber rockers as well. In fact, let me put a little, let me put a bit, little bit of light on these for you. That didn't help any, did it? Beautiful carbon fiber rockers, guys, down below on each side. And then you get around to the back, and if you think we're done, we're not. We're not done yet. Again, all those beautiful carbon fiber stripes laid out on the back, and then you get down to this, which is a carbon fiber rear diffuser as well. Wow, man, they did not screw around. Now, uh, it's also got an aftermarket wing. This looks like a Shelby wing. It's not, but it has a little bit of a crack in it. You know, again, 11 years old, 10,000 miles. It's not going to be perfect. There are some defects in the car. Some of what looks like, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like the lacquer that goes over the carbon fiber. It started kind of peeling, fading, and delaminating just a little bit right there. The rest of the stripes and the rest of the carbon fiber actually looks really, really good, except for right here. Um, oops. Yeah. I'm sure that can be fixed. Do you know somebody that does carbon fiber? I, I don't. <laughs> I don't. What I can tell you is uh, I've bottomed this car out doing 60, 70 miles an hour on a slope, and uh, it hit. It, it hit hard. But I'll tell you this. I thought for sure the front end disintegrated. It's still in one piece, and it still looks really good. So that is a super strong front splitter, but I'm tempted to take it off because I'm terrified it's going to get broken. And the way this carbon fiber weave looks in the sunlight, I, and this car is filthy. I haven't even washed it. Look at the transitions, the color, the sheen of that weave. It's absolutely beautiful. My biggest complaint about the car currently, there's a couple. One, the headlights. It's more aesthetics over functionality. They don't shine very brightly. It's not easy to see at night. And next, aside from the headlights, I think you guys are probably going to really like the stance. It looks good, right? It does. The stance looks really good on this car. The problem is it sits too low to make daily driving something that you can actually do with this vehicle. You're going to continue bottoming out and something's going to get damaged. I've heard the underside scrape on certain roads out here. It's just one of those things. And my biggest fear is I tried putting it in my shop the other day. We had some big storms coming through. I couldn't get the car in the shop. Why? It sits too low. As soon as I'd get it almost in the shop, you'd hear a scrape right here. We're bottoming out on these beautiful carbon fiber rockers. Um, so yeah, that, that sucks. So that's, that's about all that I could say that I don't like about the car. We've gone over the exterior. Let me show you what they did to the interior because this is something they became famous for. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be saying, Randy, are you sure this is the same car that was in the magazine? Are you sure this is the same car that was at SEMA? How do you know? Well, I found this car for $22,000 on an auction site called ACV. It's a dealer only auction. And when I saw this car and how cheap it was going for, I thought, there's something different about this car. This does not look like your typical 2011 Mustang GT. Look at the red stitching on the interior. Look at these heavily bolstered seats with the red stitching all over those as well. 
very, very nice. Then there's some other things that look a little different as well. I have never seen any Mustang with a digital climate control. This is your climate control. It is all digital. That is fully custom. Down here, I believe this is a Pioneer head unit. This is a very, very nice head unit. Obviously, that has been customized as well. Here was the next clue. California license plate. This car came from California. Anybody want to take a guess as to where Race Skins comes from? Anybody? Drop your comments below. No? Race Skins is based out of California. You got custom speakers. Look here, here, and here. This says ARC Audio. Okay. So somebody put a nice little sound system in it. Not too bad. But this is what Race Skins became very, very famous for. Aside from their amazing carbon fiber work, I don't want to take away from that at all. But would you look at this rear seat delete? This is like a GT350R back in 2011, put into a Mustang GT. They did race skins, 0010DP. Take a look at this. Look at that insulation. All that foam, lots of room. You could actually put stuff in there like nitrous bottles would fit nicely, two of them. Well, there's a, there's an idea. We've got some ARC audio speakers back here. Huh, well, that one, <laughs> that one doesn't have anything. We'll just, we'll just put that back in and pretend we didn't see that. How about that? Um, that's bolted in, that one fell out. But you've got the red stitching back here as well. And this is not pleather, this is real cowhide leather. It's the real deal. So to do this, Ford came out and assisted them with figuring out how to delete the entire rear package tray out of this car to make it safe and turn it into usable real estate within the vehicle. All right, now again, but Randy, how do you know that this car is the same car from SEMA? Well, it's super easy. See, I called up race skins. Wasn't that hard to do. Take a look at that. There it is. There she is. I've got the magazine. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. This didn't come with the car. I found this on eBay. It was super hard to find, and there was only one. I paid like $13 for this magazine. And if you look, it says 5.0 Mustang and Super Fords rule the road with carbon fiber style and 545 horsepower. The Rayskins RS50 kicks asphalt. Yeah, 545 horsepower, and that is to the wheels, which means we're looking at 600 plus horsepower to the crank. This car is a beast. So I got a hold of Rayskins on Instagram, and I sent them a few pictures of this car, and I said, hey, I've seen this car. I did my re research, my due diligence. I found it all over the internet from back in 2010 and 2011, and occasionally it popped up in 2012. So I said, I want to verify that this is the same car that you guys built for SEMA. I gave the gentleman the VIN number, and he quickly came back and said, yes, that's it. He said he has all of the sales documentation where he purchased it from Ford, and the VIN number matches. He told me that this car is a prototype. It's one of only four that were ever produced. And this is the only one like this one. The only one. And how many of them are actually left? Unfortunately, he doesn't know for sure. He thinks that there's at least this one and one more, possibly two more. But it's hard to say. What we know for sure is that we have here a prototype for so many things. A prototype for Pro Chargers to try out their new Pro Charger air-to-air -air cooled kit on a fresh, new to the market Coyote engine. This was huge, this was a big deal. Pro Chargers, of course, still sells this very kit today and it hasn't changed a whole lot. In fact, they have a stage two now. It's even better than this. A prototype with MagnaFlow 
to build this custom exhaust for this car with carbon fiber. A prototype for the interior with the rear seat delete kit. And of course, a prototype for the race skin's iconic hand laid carbon fiber stripes. Now I think it's time we fire this bad boy up. Let's hear it run. There are some issues with this car and one of them is actually kind of serious. It was listed in the description of the auction so it's not like I got screwed over, I was lied to. I knew about it from the beginning but it is something that we're gonna have to address. I was hoping to be able to get it into the shop to work on it in there Unfortunately, I don't think we can get this car into the shop. Let's crank her up. There is your Pioneer head unit. Sorry for the glare, but not much I can do about it. There is your digital climate control. It is push button. This is touch. Yes, it is climate control right there, and it works. Air conditioning works great. Then you have settings they can take you into audio output, attenuation, digital, amp gain. There are lots of audio controls in this air conditioning system right here. The Pioneer unit opens up. SD card, CD, DVD, all of that good stuff goes right here. You've got a nice little USB port right here for plugging in probably just uh, like a usb stick or something and what's crazy is the volume controls and stuff still work yes <laughs> the steering wheel controls still work of course it's bluetooth you've got hands-free calling up there as well we do have some lights on the dash a check engine light an airbag light and a tire pressure light and we can get in to that stuff here in just a second. I'm gonna show you the miles are sitting right there at 10,881, and I have put 136 miles on this car. Now, why the check engine light is on, I don't know. This was custom tuned by Pro Chargers. You can hear there's a little bit of idle surge under the hood as well. I don't know if it needs an updated tune. I don't know if we have some loose uh, charge pipes. I don't think so. No, I don't think we got any loose charge pipes. The Pro Charger, you know, whines a little bit, but I've seen several videos of these things, and that seems to be how they sound. They just make a, an awful lot of noise. But just in case, I did buy a, uh, a set of three, a three-pack of Pro Charger oil change kits, basically just Pro Charger oil, so we could go ahead and change it out and put fresh oil in it. Now, there is something else in the trunk that I did not show you and I'll show you that now. We'll move this magazine out of the way because I sure don't wanna, I don't wanna tear that up. It's kind of important. Part of the car's pedigree. Take a look down there. Look at those Alpines, right? That is nice. We got two amplifiers. Very nice, very nice custom work that they did in here. It looks absolutely phenomenal and i think that really is a testament to these people's build quality their dedication to quality and functionality for the most part this isn't just a car that got pushed into the sema booth and sat there and then got pushed into a storage booth they built this car they spent countless hours days late nights weekends putting this car together designing everything designing the carbon fiber in-house to make this car what it is today, what you see in front of you. And here this car is 12 years later. 12 years later, here we are, and the car has held up very, very well. So I'm super impressed. Now, Race Skins does hold the patent for 06 to 2011. Shelby's, the Cobras, the Hertz, all of that stuff, they hold the patent to the stripes. So you have to go through them to get the official stripes for those cars. They're a big deal. And now the company that owns Race Skins is still the same people. It's two brothers that own the company, but they own Create Inc. 
and they do custom wraps and they do a phenomenal job. I've seen some of their work. So they're still here. They're still relevant today and they're still doing what they love to do. All right, now I said the car had a pretty serious problem. So what is that problem? Well, there's a couple of them. Number one, these seats. These seats, although the rest of the car held up really well, these seats did not. Now it doesn't help that they're loose, the bolts aren't all the way in, but these seats absolutely suck as far as comfortability goes. Not very comfortable seats, so they are not adjustable. They'll move forward and back a little bit, but this, you can open it, and you can set it back, that's it. It doesn't, okay, it, it does go that far back, but like, anyway, when you sit in this, it doesn't feel like you're sitting in the car right. The next issue with these seats, they don't have airbags. Because they don't have airbags, all of the airbag modules under the front seats are missing. There are no airbags in either of these front seats, which means the car's airbag system does not function, and that makes it truthfully dangerous to be out driving on the road, you get in a wreck, you will not have airbags protecting you. That is something I want to remedy by finding a pair of OEM seats, just some nice factory black leather seats with the airbags and the modules intact, and we should be able to take care of that. The next issue I already told you about, it sits too low to the ground, and I'm just terrified we're gonna end up damaging that front splitter, which can't be replaced. These parts are one of a kind. There is no aftermarket support for any of this carbon fiber stuff. Race Skins did all of that, and I don't believe they do any carbon fiber anymore. So if something happens to them, that's forever. Now for the big issue. When I go to put it in gear, you push the clutch down. You hear it clunking. If I pump up the clutch, give it a bunch of pumps, She'll go in a lot easier. Whole, I mean, she's almost butter going into gear now. Reverse, but there we go. See, it lost its bleed and now it won't go into reverse. So if you come back over here and you pump that up again, it will go into, re it will go into reverse now. So that is the biggest issue. The listing said the car clunks into gear. Well, that's not a big deal, right? No, it's not a big deal. Surely there's a slave cylinder right here under the hood. And it probably just needs to be bled or well, maybe it just needs a little bit of fluid, right? That's what I thought. I came over here and looked and uh, there's one problem. There's just a master cylinder. There's no slave cylinder over here. Nope. None at all. I looked down. I even took this out to look down around there and no, nope. There's no slave cylinder and there's no bleeding the slave cylinder. I already did some research onto it and uh, it sucks. Uh, bleeding the slave cylinder is uh, something that you have to build a custom tool for. You've got to take this off. You gotta buy a one and three eighths inch drain stopper for a kitchen sink. And you drill a hole through it, you put a quarter inch double barbed brass fitting into it, and then you use a Mighty Vac hand pump, a vacuum pump. You seal that drain plug into here, you pump it up to about 20 inches of mercury, and then while it's holding that vacuum, you gotta go in there and hit the clutch pedal about 20 times, get out, stop, let out the vacuum, pump it up, do it all over again, repeatedly until eventually, Hopefully, the clutch is properly bled. So driving this car is a little bit of a pain because as you drive it, it does lose the hydraulic pressure for the clutch and you gotta pump up that clutch to get it back. Another issue is this hood. You can see the gap here. You gotta push it down after you get out, but you know, not that big of a deal. So here's what I'm thinking. Why don't I set up the GoPro? We could take this car for a quick ride. All right, guys, are we ready to go? Let's try not to break this front splitter. I'll go ahead and uh, pump up this clutch a little bit. And let's try to get out of here without smacking the front end on something. 
you got to be so gentle especially coming ooh I just scraped especially coming over these rocks I've already done this and I have scraped the living heck out of the splitter oh my okay here we go let's take it for a quick spin there we go and turn it around let's get back on the road and uh we'll go the other way traction is definitely an issue in this car <laughs> when you start really getting into the boost traction is a big problem even with the pilot sport 4s's i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wait till this guy in front of me gets down the road a little bit and then we'll get back on the road and continue our uh <laughs> we'll continue our little test drive. All right. Easy does it, girl. Oh, man. She is dangerous. I mean, Mustangs are known to be dangerous they love running into crowds <laughs> this one oh, oh. Oh, oh. she's a monster she's an absolute beast and she handles the road Digits, triple digits not a problem not a problem it's like are you that's it that's all we got really oh we could do more <sighs> easy <laughs> wrong gear short throw shifter I think what this car really needs is a driver mod. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. Oh. We're, we're well into triple digits now. We are well into triple digits. Um, and one of the things that I really love about this car is not only that it's capable of going really, really fast, it is a screamer of a car, guys. It can go really, really fast, but when you need to stop, if you want to slow down, it also does that very quickly as well. And that boost is just insane. She's only running seven PSI, guys. That's it. She's only running seven PSI of boost, and she's pushing 600 horsepower to the crank on seven PSI. We can absolutely turn that up. We can also upgrade that intercooler as well. This car is something. Now, at the end of the day, the real question is, do we need more than 600 crank horsepower? Do we need more than 545 horsepower to the rear wheels. What you gotta understand is, in 2011, the Shelby Cobra GT500 had a 5.4 liter supercharged V8 that produced 550 horsepower to the crank. To the crank. This car is the 5.0 liter pro-charged on seven pounds of boost, and it is 600 horsepower, 50 horses more than the GT500 with the 5.4 liter in it. That is super impressive. How much did it cost to build this car? 
That's a great question, and I asked race skins what the cost would have been if a guy off the street brought in his Mustang and said, do this to my car. The custom carbon fiber, the suspension, the pro charger, you would be looking at forty to fifty thousand dollars on top of the price of the Mustang. Forty to fifty thousand dollars on top of spending thirty some thousand dollars for a Mustang GT. That's a lot of money for a Mustang. A lot of money for a Mustang. Now, all that means to me is that I, I got a smoking deal on a Mustang that's got 40 to 50 grand in mods and I only paid $22,000 for it. And it's a SEMA car, it's got a pedigree and it's only got 10,800 miles on the odometer. And even though she's got a few quirks that need to be worked out, it's a damn good car for that kind of money, guys. Tell me where else you're gonna get 600 horsepower in a car like this for $20,000. I'll wait. Yeah, I'll wait. Tell me. You can't. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Son of a gun. No, man. No, man. You're not going to get this kind of performance and power for $20,000 anywhere else. It's not just not going to happen. Not going to happen. This is a phenomenal car, a beast of a car. It's a ton of fun and it gets looks absolutely everywhere. Everybody wants to know about the car. And I am more than happy to tell them the story of how I have a very unique one-off Ford Mustang GT that was built by Race Skins in conjunction with a few other really popular companies that made it to the stage at SEMA back in 2010. And I got the magazine in the trunk to prove it. What a phenomenal car and what a phenomenal deal. Probably, to date, my best deal ever. You guys can feel free to comment below and tell me if you agree or disagree. So I've teased you guys with this car for quite a while now. I've had it for, I don't know, a week and a half to two weeks. And I finally decided it was time to get out and give you guys a video on this amazing vehicle. I've already got people trying to buy it from me. And while the name of the game is usually flip it and make money, when am I ever gonna find a deal like this again? Let's get me on a straightaway here because this thing, I got myself something that's more powerful than the Cobra, the GT500 of this very same year. And I got it for a fraction of the price. And I know this because I went to Hudeberg Chevrolet the other day because they had a 2012 GT500, the 5.4. I know, I know, it's not the one everybody wants. If you're gonna get one of the GT500s, you want the 2013 to 2014. Because instead of 5.4, it's got a 5.8. It's also got a one-piece carbon fiber drive shaft. You want a 2013-2014. It's almost 700 horsepower from that car. Absolutely insane. But I looked at a 2012 GT500, and that car was $42,000. Now, granted, it is a real Carroll Shelby. It's a real snake, a GT500, and that's where the money comes in. But for half of that price, I have a car that looks, I think, a little more unique than a GT500 because it's a one-off and it's got more horsepower for half the price. Come on, man. You can't go wrong with that. I'll tell you something, this car loves to go fast and I feel like it's going to get me in a lot of trouble. Absolutely 
in love with this car. All right, let's head on back to the Hacienda. Lost my gear there. Clutch didn't want to go in into gear. You never know when it's going to do it. Sometimes it acts right. Other times, I'm going to put it in neutral. I'm going to go ahead and pump the clutch real quick. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's acting up again, guys. We're definitely going to have to address that sooner than later. It's not pleasant. It's not fun when you go to shift gears and you put it into the gear and it will not engage. You just cannot get the shifter to go into gear. So you gotta pump the clutch a couple times and then try it again. It's embarrassing, uh, but it happens. It's not a perfect car by any stretch of the imagination, but considering it's a 12 year old Mustang GT with only 10,000 miles on it and a SEMA build, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with the car. I'm very satisfied with it. We're gonna get back to the house. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my uh, scan tool and we're going to run a diagnostic on this real quick. Just to try to figure out why the check engine light is on. It came on, I don't know, four or five days ago. I haven't noticed it running or driving any differently. It seems to do just fine. In fact, on the highway today, I was able to achieve over 24 miles a gallon cruising in sixth gear. So it seems to be just fine. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be something like rear O2 sensors because I don't think it has any. If I remember correctly, this car is supposed to have headers with uh, catless mid-pipes three inch all the way out the back. So uh, we'll run a diagnostic on it, see what she's complaining about. Maybe it's a mass airflow sensor or something, who knows, but we definitely want to run that diagnostic and see what's going on. And I definitely want to take it somewhere and get a dyno tune done on this. I would like to have a couple different options, so it'd be good if I had a, a handheld tuner. Um, it would obviously be great to have an 87 tune because guaranteed, no matter where you go, there will be 87 octane gasoline. And then, of course, it'd be great to have a 93 as well. Unfortunately, here in Oklahoma and a lot of places I travel, 93 is not very popular. You have to know where to get it. So maybe it would be better to have three tunes, an 87, a 91, and a 93. I know what you're saying, why not go E85? Well, to do E85, we would need to change the intake in tank pump. We would need a boost pump as well. We would need to add a return line. We would need an entire computer system dedicated to being able to decipher the amount of ethanol content in the gasoline. For me, that's that's a lot. It's a lot. Now, granted, the horsepower numbers would go through the roof, even at the same 7 PSI. But honestly, I'm not complaining about 600 horsepower or 545 horsepower to the rear wheels. I, I think that's plenty. The car is a lot of fun. It's still very manageable and drivable the way it is. I'm afraid that if we start pushing 700 horsepower, that maybe the car wouldn't be nearly as enjoyable to drive. All right, before we go any further in the video, I think you should hear the way this blow off valve sounds. It is absolutely insane. And if that's not enough for you, we'll take you to the back end. And you can hear what this three inch magna flow sounds like. We'll go ahead and fire it up and give her a couple revs. And yeah, I know someone's gonna point out that right pipe is a little bit off center there. In fact, it's quite a bit off center. We'll definitely get that checked out. Now let's listen to this exhaust real quick. Then we'll run a diagnostic and find out why the check engine light is on.
Now, before we go any further, I got a box of goodies from Global Electronic Technology. And I want to give a big shout out and thank you to them. They even gave me some shirts. Look at this. That's spiffy right there. I like that. We got some hats. You guys know how I love. I love my hats. We got plenty of hats, some water bottles, a face mask. What is this? These are uh, these are interesting water bottles right here. Very cool. So I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Global Electronic Technology for sending me all of this cool merch. I got something else to show you too. You know what that is? That is Monkey Wrench Mike's Fire Mercedes, the one that caught on fire and about caught the shop on fire as well. Well, since that day, <laughs> I thought, you know, it would be a good idea to have some fire extinguishers in this shop. So we do. <laughs> We've got a... Uh, they are good to go. These are brand new. I've got two five-pound extinguishers in my shop now. One for each bay. Both are ready to go. They're hung up. Simply grab it, pull the pin. Look how easy. I mean, these things just come right off the wall. Boom. Pull the pin, and you're done. So, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we have fire extinguishers now. Just in case anything else ever decides it wants to catch on fire in my shop. Now, one more thing that came with the Mustang that's worth noting is it came with this this box. This box was in the back. You've got that that weird noise diverter valve that takes the engine noise to the interior of the cabin. This right here, I'm not entirely sure where that came from, but this is definitely part of the uh, the PCV system, and this goes to the other side where there would have been uh, two of these um, that clipped on to the valve covers and then ran up to the intake somewhere. There's bolts and brackets and I'm assuming we've got some suspension bolts in here, seat belt pieces. Um, I don't know what some of this stuff is, but there's, there's a lot, including the factory air box. Look at this sucker right here. There's your cold air induction. The factory air box right there. The factory snorkel with the sound deadening chambers. Some rubber bits. Some more rubber bits. These would be dams probably underneath the car. More underneath the car. These would be your rear seat belts. There's no rear seats, so you don't need rear seat belts anymore. And the rear seat belt buckles as well. We have SCT 2010 instructions and return authorization policy. Please watch before using. And uh, this, this right here, an SCT Excalibrator. This would have been what they used to tune the car. Unfortunately, it did not come with the tuner. I was really hopeful. There's the original mirror caps. Um, I'm pretty sure they, they took these. The reason they're discolored like this is they probably used these as, what do they call it? This would be the, the positive mold or the negative mold. I can't remember, but they would have used these to manufacture the mold for the carbon fiber caps. We got this right here. This used to go to some speakers. That much is for sure. Um, it doesn't anymore. There we go. ARC audio. It's an ARC 6000. So these probably ran those little tweeters in the back that no longer seem to be hooked up. More grill pieces. Here's another one of those ARC 6000s right here. So that would have run the other side with the wires and stuff. And some, I don't know what that is, but yeah. Lots of, there's a glove. Do you need a glove? <laughs> lots of little, lots of little bits and pieces in the box. I wish the tuner was in here. Well, this is a little concerning. Now, here are the codes that I've got so far, a PO420 and 30. Both of these are catalyst below efficiency, meaning the secondary O2 sensors on bank one and two are reading that the catalytic converter is not functioning properly. Well, this shouldn't have catalytic converters. And since this is supposed to have a custom dyno tune, I was under the impression that these probably should have been programmed out so I'm really kind of concerned that maybe this car was reverted back to factory and maybe it's actually running on its factory tune. 
So there it is, my 2011 Ford Mustang GT, a one of a kind, super rare vehicle. And it just so happens that it was super cheap and super charged. I am very curious about the tune that's on this vehicle. You would really have thought that the rear O2 sensors would have been programmed out on a custom tune. Now, I'll be honest with you, even though I am a little skeptical about the tune, I don't think it's running on its factory tune, because if it was, I don't see any way this thing would be able to run with the amount of air being forced into the intake from this Pro Charger. Um, there's also the question about the uh, fuel injectors. If I remember correctly, these are going to be upgraded fuel injectors because that was part of the Pro Charger kit, which, by the way, I looked it up. The Pro Charger kit today for this car sells for anywhere from $7,500 to about $9,000, and that also depends on what kind of an intercooler you've got. You can barely see it, but right there is the Pro Charger intercooler, and it mounts right up to this bracket um, right here that uh, that contains the hood latch. I'm going to lift that up just a hair, but yeah, it fits in there absolutely perfectly. It looks looks absolutely wonderful, and so does this install. I mean, this thing looks great. Over here is your oil fill plug and your dipstick. You turn that screw and pull it out, and you can check your oil level. Then there is a tube that runs all the way under the car, and that's how you drain your oil and refill it. Getting under this car is going to be fun. We're probably going to have to do it in the driveway with a jack, some jack stands. I don't really see any other way to do it. And I definitely, as much as I love that front lip, unfortunately, for now, that front lip is going to have to come off or re we, we just risk damaging it beyond repair. Another thing, this has a splined lug nuts. I have yet to find the key to uh, to those, so maybe I can reach out to Rayskins and, and maybe they have them, maybe they don't. I, I don't know. This was actually traded in to Thousand Oaks Toyota in California. Um, and I bought it from them at the uh, wholesale dealer auction uh, for a relatively cheap price. So I don't think they knew what they had. From what I understand, this was traded in on a brand new Toyota Supra. Um, and, and now it's here. So there it is. I would love to, I would love to look under here. Maybe we can real quick and just take a peek at the fuel injectors. If we can get this cover off without having to remove the uh, the strut bar there. And we can. Perfect. Can we see the fuel injectors that are hiding? I doubt it, because you've got these, uh, whew, yeah. You got coolant hoses running over this styrofoam and the fuel injectors are going to be sitting underneath those. Dang, I was really hoping that we could see the fuel injectors, get a quick glimpse of them. There they are right there. There they are. They have, what color are they? A lot of times you can tell by the color. These have an orange marking on them. Yeah, but honestly, I can't, uh, I can't tell. But they do have a, they do have an orange marking on them. So if any of you guys know what that means, if it even means anything, you know, drop a comment below and let me know. What do you guys think of the 10,000 mile, this is just insane, 10,000 mile, 2011 Ford Mustang GT. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this thing back together, and I think we're going to call this a video. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll put some links down below. There is still a Race Skins fan page, and if you really want to, you can join their fan page on Facebook and you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you will start seeing pictures of this car somewhere around the 2010-2011 mark. And then you'll see when it got into some magazines, it was in the LA Auto Show, it was in the Chicago Auto Show. The car has literally been everywhere. It used to be a big deal. It was a very famous car and then it just got forgotten about which is really sad a car like this should not be forgotten so here it is we have it we brought it back and it's up to you to help share the video and make this car famous again it deserves it and i want to give a big shout out and thank you to create inc the folks over there who own race skins for their amazing work this beautiful carbon fiber 
I know they spent countless hours, days, weeks, months, and probably a lot of their own hard-earned money putting this car together. Thank you for manufacturing such a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. I truly appreciate it. Speaking of appreciation, I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my video. Definitely hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed, and follow me on Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds, links down below. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.